be professional. Don't be a dick. And uh, on an emotional level, lift people up. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Tom Talks Rubbish, and stand back for another video. This time, I'm joined by a very good friend of mine, a mentor, a very, uh, just an all round nice guy. <laughs> I'm joined by the one and only Dom Smith from Give Me a Whole Year, uh, Wrestle Spear, Sound Spear, Wobbling About and Rocking Out, and many other places. Man, so you got them all. The show, Dom. You got them all. I'm very impressed. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, it's good to be back. I was just saying off, off camera, you know, I've watched you kind of grow and develop, uh, you know, over the last year or so. Uh, you know, we've had many chats on this channel, so it is always a pleasure to be back. It's always a pleasure to kind of, again, be a part of, you know, a small part of your growth and development, you know, as a content mm. creator. And, you know, just, yeah, just always good to catch up with you, mate. I really appreciate that, my friend. I don't think I've ever asked you this question. I think we might have talked about it on streams. But the question I begin this show on now, Don, is mm -hmm. where do you first discover wrestling as an overall fan? I think I think for me, uh, wrestling has always been a form of escapism. And we might have touched on this in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I remember using it as a coping mechanism from a very early age. I used to have physiotherapy. I used to have like leg gaiters where I used to have to have my legs strapped up. Uh, and, you know, I had to do a certain degree of physio in a morning before I went to school, maybe like half an hour, 45 minutes in these kind of very excruciating leg gaiters, um, which are really painful. And I remember watching a um, an advert on Sky Television for Hulk Hogan versus all oh, it was the end of Hulkamania. That's what it was. It was the end of Hulkamania. Uh, and Yokozuna had just beaten uh, Hulk Hogan, I think. And it would oh, have been wow. 90, yeah, 1994, maybe around that time. Uh, obviously, people that watch this can correct my time. But I remember going from, I'd watched Biker Mice from Mars, showing my age, uh, one of the greatest cartoons of all time on morning television. And I think, uh, you know, the channel had been switched over. And and I just caught this advert and the end of Hulkamania. And I was like, wow, that is one big dude in Yokozuna. And of course, Hulk Hogan is a larger than life character. And I remember just kind of um, getting into it from there, you know. And then, mm -hmm. you know, around that time, the one, two, three kid had debuted. And, I, you know, I was a small dude and I watched the one, two, three kid who, of course, became X-Pac uh, in D-Generation X. He was a small guy and he was taking on all these big dudes. And I was like... Right, maybe if the one, two, three kid can can be successful, and he's like a martial artist, you know, cruiserweight, maybe someone who's as short and as you know as uh, skinny as me uh, can uh, can be successful, and then that graduated. I've had very similar kind of um, approaches, Tom, to my favorite characters as they've gone mm. on. It went then turned into Mick Foley and Mankind as I get older. You know, the guy, the guy didn't look the same as everybody else. He didn't walk the same as everybody else. But he, uh, but he, but he was a success. And so, in my teenage years, you know, in my childhood, it was the one, two, three kid X Pac, Sean Walkman. In my teenage years, it was I Mick know. Foley. And then, of course, in my twenties and to my to my early thirties, the uh, late great Bray Wyatt became that mm. character uh, for me. So, but so in short, that is the timeline of my love of wrestling, and I'm kind of on a dip now. You know, I'll be honest with you, of course, since the, yeah. the death of Bray, as I think you and I have talked about this off record, you know, I'm kind of on a dip now. But, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what characters can 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 uh, can excite me again in the future. Mm. You talked about uh, doing physio whilst uh, with, with cerebral palsy, correct? Mm. Same as yes. my good self, like yeah. with cerebral palsy. So when you discover wrestling, do you have like a play? What? what Kids today would now call a playlist of matches that you're like, while I'm doing this, this match is going on to sort of keep me motivated. I mean, I mean, back in the day, uh, you know, I know I think it was the one, two, three kids, you know, kind of upset victory against Razor Ramon. Uh, you know, that was when I was like, wow, you know, this kid who, you know, uh, who was the underdog, you know, and, and I'm all about that, you know, as we've talked about before, you know, forever, mm. forever the underdog, Tom. And I think, um, you know, 
that, that so that was back then. I think now, if I was to look back on it, the playlist of kind of motivational matches I would put on, you know, it'd be it would be Mick Foley uh, beating The Rock, uh, you know, on Raw. I think you and I that's like one of my favorite wrestling moments yeah. of all time. It would be that. Um, it would be Mick Foley, Mankind beating The Rock. Uh, maybe the um, maybe the uh, Bob Wire match. I think it was uh, Triple H and. Cactus Jack at the Royal Rumble 2000. Uh, Cactus Jack Mick Foley was it was like his retirement match, but it was a great match. Uh, you know, mm. finished with a, with Cactus getting the pedigree on the tax. You know, iconic uh, kind of um, kind of match there. And then um, I think I think Bray Wyatt winning the uh, winning the championship in the Elimination Chamber would be my modern day one. Um, kind of I, I think the debut of the Fiend against Finn Balor. I think that was a summer slam that would be one uh, and i would go back to you know i'd go back to some one two three kid matches as well so that would be a, a short playlist i'm trying to think of a modern day match you know i certainly think you know wrestlemania this year cody rhodes finishing the story could probably go on there as well because i mm. i believe cody is is due to finish the story tom mm. so do i but i'll be honest you know what i'm like this might have gone out after he finishes the story. Well, well so fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed Cody finishes the story in uh, in April of this year, 2024. So when you talk about uh, cerebral palsy and wrestling and stuff, did you ever have a moment, because I did, and this is a very niche cerebral palsy question, but you get overexcited watching wrestling and you kick the person doing the physio to you. Oh, you yeah. Because oh, I've had that. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely, my legs that they, they go all over the place, Tom. You know, I mean, mm. uh, it's difficult to control them at the best of times. So I think um, for me, yeah, I've had, you know, I've had re- wrestling was always a way for me to cope. It was always a way for me to deal with pain, uh, you know. And for a lot of people, it, you know, it is, it is that, it is escapism, and and uh, you know, and like I say, right up until last year, you know, I, I was, I was, I was all about that. You know, wrestling was escape from the stresses of work. Life, the stresses of, of 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 you know all the other things and responsibilities that, that that are in you know my life and I know other people feel the same you know and like I say I've kind of taken a dip uh, you know I've gotten more into you know companies like MLW I'm into at the moment uh, NWA I think is doing great work but going back to your question yeah I, I, wrestling has always been that form of escapism for me um, and when and when Bray died it kind of it kind of stopped for a bit being that and it would but it was always that whether it was pain whether it was work you know uh, anything that was stressing me out in my life wrestling became that escapism so all the way from physio uh, as a kid all the way through to a stressful work day wrestling was my escape yeah so you talked about the the companies you're currently a fan of mm. so you said it was Bray's death that made you be like I need to take a step back from WWE. I know how much of a fan you were of his, mm. but is there any other reason you felt like you had to take a step back from WWE? I think um, it's interesting because I don't think we've done an interview since I stopped being on the podcast uh, mm. as much. You know, maybe I'll do a little guest spot on Give Me a Whole Year these days. Uh, fortunately, we have, you know, Anthony, who's an incredible presenter doing AEW. We now have Sam who I know you have an interview uh, coming up with and you've also done interviews with in the past. He does SmackDown for us. He's also my, uh, you know, co-founder, as it were, of WrestleSphere. Uh, I, I, for me, uh, you know, I'm now a qualified counsellor. Uh, I think we've spoken since then, but, I, you know, I'm mm. now working nationally in the UK um, for an agency called Disability Plus and we support people with oh, disabilities. Yeah, yeah, so I work with them and we support people with disabilities uh, all over the country, um, you know, whether, whether that's with mental health or anything like that. So that kind of thing, it's, you know, it's, it's a counselling service. So that's um, that's a big part of my day now is doing that work. And when you are doing something that important, um, you can't necessarily stay up till two in the morning. And mm. four in the morning doing a wrestling podcast or, you know, so, so I think, yeah, it was a lot of work responsibilities and different responsibilities that had hit me that I didn't have when we first met you and I, when, when we first met, I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing that sort of stuff. Take me back to the moment that you realized I can't stay up till X, Y, Z at this point. 
and I need to take a break from the podcast because I know a what all content creators tend to do, a note page went up on Twitter and things like that. Take me back to that moment. Maybe you had a discussion with your good lady, Emma, and things like that. And maybe you were like, I need to step away. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that's a good point you bring up and well remembered. I, you know, I, I definitely did have a chat with with Emma and a chat with Anthony, uh, you know, Sam as well, Andy Spores, who is also now part of Give Me a Whole Year and also part of WrestleSphere. We we needed to, you know, the the the, the podcast Give Me a Whole Year had, had done some great things. We'd done some work with WWE and and various promotions, you know, and obviously the live streams were were really gaining traction. So. It, it, I knew it was important, Tom, to keep it going. I knew it was important to, to, to make sure that there was longevity to the podcast. So, you know, I basically pre-planned it. You know, before it happened, you know, I, I knew I was going to go. I told everybody else I was going to go. You know, I was kind of, you know, keeping up the client work. You know, as soon as I had my first client, Tom, it was like, okay, my priorities have got to shift now. Mm. Um, you know, from, you know, from 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 kind of wrestling stuff to to dealing with real problems with you know you know with yeah. real people with real problems you know the the uh, and you know wrestling now I'm starting to enjoy it again because I'm not staying up doing the podcast I'm actually watching it you know I'm I'm watching it the next morning which I've never done before or certainly not since 2017 since we started the podcast mm. I was always you know, finishing at 4 a.m., watching it live. And now I'm like, I get a good night's sleep and I can watch it the day afterwards and Emma can watch it with me and maybe Emma's boys can watch it with me, you know, and and it's that much more, it feels a lot more healthy, Tom. I feel a lot healthier than I did, to be honest, when I, you know, when I first met you. Uh, and But fortunately, and credit mm. must go here, you know, whenever this goes live, I will be perpetually grateful to Sam Smith, to Andy Spores, to Anthony Naylor, to Dan Hargreaves as well, who is, you know, he, you know, he's he's one of Amazing. my best friend in the world. I mean, so you know, Anthony is the same. I've known Anthony for 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 decades now, and Sam and Andy are relatively new friends that I met through wrestling media, but they are very very important to me. And and, and the podcast, you know, and, and as well as WrestleSphere, you know, can can only exist and can only keep going, uh, Tom, because of uh, because of those guys and their you know great great work that they do. You talked about WrestleSphere there. How does the idea come from going to, because I don't think we've had a at least a recorded conversation since the launch of WrestleSphere. I could be wrong. Like, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we've talked about it a bit, but I'm happy to talk about it again. How did it go from, we're just going to have fun watching the shows to, we want to actually start a full-on, like, not news coverage type, but we want to get bigger interviews. We want to, split because i know soundsphere is a music site we well, want to create a wrestling subsidiary area yes absolutely and that's very much exactly i mean you know i think we have talked about this off record you know exactly why we did it you know and this is crucial for anybody in wrestling media or anybody who's interested in wrestle wrestling media to know you know we were getting Great music themed interviews with the likes of Malachi Black in AEW, uh, Max Caster from AEW. And of course, we'd had years of talking to the likes of Kurt Angle, uh, you know, Mick Foley, you know, through TNA or, you know, um, Impact Wrestling as it became, you know, talking about music with these wrestlers on Soundsphere. You know, there was always a musical lean. Um, and that's that's great. But from a business standpoint, WWE were like, you know, we can give you people to talk to music, you know, talk about music with, you know, um, but, but, you know, if I wanted to delve into, as you know, as we've just discussed, my interests have kind of broadened out into mental health awareness over mm. the years with wobbling about rocking out my counseling work. If I wanted to talk about fitness, for example, you know, from a business standpoint, companies like AEW and WWE might not see the relevance. So I thought a wrestling specific platform would be uh, ideal. And that as well, you know, Tom, you know, is key because they're looking for numbers. They're looking for big mm -hmm. numbers, uh, you know, and we're still developing, we're still growing, you know, uh, but it, but it, but it's a start. WrestleSphere is in its infancy. I think we're just over a year old now and we've had some great content, you know, with the likes of LA Knight. Yeah. 
Uh, we've also spoken to, you know, numerous TNA and Impact stars as well. Uh, you know, we've been able to cover Money in the Bank. We've been able mm. to cover AEW, uh, UK shows, UK-specific shows. Go and check out our YouTube. Go and check out our website, WrestleSphere.com. And, and you can see the level of success we've had in early days. But crucially, Tom, they're looking for numbers and they're looking for relevance. They want a site that is going to benefit them. You know, you and I have talked about this on record, off record. They are looking for thousands of views yeah, per yeah. video. They are looking for thousands of hits per article before they even let you sniff at the wrestling media door. That is the the, the, the harsh reality of this world we live in. Mm. Is And the content creation world is that it is uh, for these people and for these representatives. You know, WWE is wonderful PR company, the Romans, uh, you know, Impact or TNA as it is now known, you know, uh, Simon at, uh, you know, at uh, the TNA UK, um, you know, PR company um, is, is, you know, um, you know, is incredible. They're lovely people. Uh, John at AEW, they want, numbers they want success they want to see that their brand can benefit from working with you and that is why we built wrestlesphere to have a wrestling specific product that they could engage with we could engage with them and they could see crucially tom the value of doing so mm, i understand what you're saying completely there so if give me a whole year is sort of the live streaming side the fun sort of the, side that's the fun side where we the, can yeah the more yeah fun side like you said and WrestleSphere is the more business orientated side. Mm. I think that's the right word. Like, how do you decide? Because I know during specifically Clash of the Castle, you split content between WrestleSphere and Give Me a Whole Year. How do you decide, for example, this Rhea, Rhea, Rhea Ripley clip will be great for Give Me a Whole Year, but this Dominic Mysterio clip will be great for WrestleSphere? Yeah, I think it's it's definitely the more fun stuff, the sillier stuff, the the more relaxed stuff, Tom. That is for give me your whole yeah, you know, give me your whole yeah is is us letting our our collective hair down, and and that is why give me your whole yeah works, and that is why you know we we can have fun, we can be opinionated, we can be raw, no pun intended, on give me your whole yeah. WrestleSphere is very professional, you know that we are going for these events, we are going for media accreditation, you know we are wanting these um you know these these big events. Give me your whole yeah. We we might you know we. I can criticize the product on Give Me a Whole Year in a way that I can't. I can do that. I can do that professionally That's on WrestleSphere. Yeah, I can do that professionally on WrestleSphere. There's a way to do it. I will absolutely be critical um, of the product on WrestleSphere, but I might do it in a professional, balanced way, right? Mm -hmm. That's it's you know, the difference between Give Me a Whole Year, Give Me a Whole Year is opinion, and and WrestleSphere is professional, researched balanced mm. coverage you know media journal journalism give me a whole year is is fun wrestlesphere is journalism that's perfect my friend so you talked about there the great co-hosts you have being dan sam and and newcomer uh and andy and andy, yeah. andy spears uh sports, sports sorry my right. brain is going to it make it make it make sense there's a lot of spears there's a lot of you know i get it sports. So we are going to do a quick word association. I'm going to say a name. You're going to say three words to describe that person. Cool. Uh, Anthony Naylor. Ridiculous. Uh, passionate. And I don't know. I'm going to say love because I love him. I love him with all my heart. Yeah. But Sam's... definitely ridiculous. Definitely ridiculous. Sam Smith. Professional. Uh um dedicated uh, dedicated to WrestleSphere and his wife. So yeah, dedicate yeah, because it's either and give me a whole yeah. So dedicated, professional, and um I'm trying to think of another one. Um very like what's the word? Um very like determined. He's very determined, mm. yeah. Yeah. Uh Dan Hargreaves. Yeah, we can't, man, can't be, can't, can't, can't forget Dan. God, I, I love that man. Uh, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say friendly, and, and I don't want this to be missed. I'm not just writing, I've never met anyone so kind. Mm. 
I've never met anyone. So, and that's outside of wrestling. That's outside of this friendly in the purest sense. Um, dri- driven because he wants the, the things he's involved with to succeed. And, you know, and he wants the people to succeed as well. Mm-hmm. Like he's not, and, and selfless, selfless, because he's not about being on camera all the time. He'll be backstage supporting Anthony's shows. He will, you know, he'll bring me a present randomly just to make me smile. So I would say, yeah, yeah, definitely. That selfless is up there, you know, absolutely for, for Dan Hargreaves. Wonderful. I have one more that I've just thought of off the top of my head and it's very self-indulgent, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, And then before we do that, Andy Spores. Man, man, Andy. He, it's difficult. You give it, I mean, I I understand why you've done it and it's a very good question, but there's so much I can say about these people. And Andy, Andy would, you know, Andy helped me in those media rooms, in those high pressure media rooms, you know, he was so understanding and so supportive. He would give you the shirt off his back to give you a hand and to give you a leg up. Um, so you know, I'm not answering your question, am I? Um, no, no, support, are. supportive, uh, nurturing because he wants WrestleSphere to grow and develop, mm. and and. I don't want to repeat myself. Obviously, there's a lot of similar words, you know, that I could throw around. Um, just grit, grit, you know, that grit that Sporzy has to to run as far as he does, you know, in his own, because he's, he's a passionate runner, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, to go to, you know, WrestleMania on his own. Obviously, we met up with him, but to go to WrestleMania on his own in the search of coverage, not even knowing if he's going to get media accreditation, that grit... That's what I take from from Andy Spores, that grit and and I know determination has come up, but but just pure grit. I think the the Newcastle, the Northern grit. I think yeah. that Andy Spores has. This is very self indulgent, but what the hell, me, man. That, I I understand why you've done that, but again, there's so much I could say about you, you know. And I, you know, what there's words, there's words there again that have come up, but that passion, mate, that passion, that that. You know, I rarely see in 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 so many people. I'm talking about across the board. I'm talking about in general, like people in life. That passion that you have for creating um, is is you know for telling people stories. So passion mm. is their number one. Um, brave, I'm going to say, because it's not easy, especially obviously you and I have different levels of cerebral palsy. But but again, to to move into your own place as you've done, to set up and continue your podcast as you've done, and to also start new relationships. I know you're part of a big podcast network now. That oh, doesn't yeah. happen. That doesn't happen without without balls. And I'm going to say balls, but bravery still counts. Bravery still counts there, you know. So I'm going to say that. And um, let me let me see if I can think of the right. I've got I've got a. I've got a word, but I can't think of the right way to. You're like the glue that holds so many things together. Like, for example, I met Nick Houseman effectively because of you. You know, I know this story. You know, I mean, yeah, I met, I met, you know, Sean Ross Sapp basically because of you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw one in left field, and you can interpret this how you want. But you are glue because you you bring people together, even if you're not in the room. And that that is a that is a One really sp- that is a really special skill. That is a really special skill. Is that you are you are glue. You're the wrestling. I always, I always say this. You're the wrestling journalist. Journalist. Yeah. You're the glue that 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 holds communities together. There are people that watch your videos that have never met each other that can suddenly meet and be like, oh yeah, Tom talks rubbish. Oh yeah. And that's you, you know, you are that's, the glue. That's very nice of you to say, my friend. I've that's always true. appreciated your mentorship. You know that. So as you talked about getting back into wrestling and things like that. So what was the moment like, Don, where you were like, okay, I've taken some time off from wrestling and stuff like that. The counts inside maybe is going well and things like that. I want to dip my toe back in. What was yeah. that moment like? 
Yeah, I think I think watching TNA come back. Obviously, there are some at the time of writing. There's a little bit of controversy with Scott Demore, who's been fantastic for TNA in mm. my view. He's uh, he's been let go, and it's a new start, I guess, for TNA. But TNA has been, you know, the, the media team in the UK have been so great, Simon and Lauren, to us and giving us opportunities right from, you know, you know, years ago, almost ten plus years. I've been working with TNA with impact wrestling and watching, watching the TNA transition was like, hang on, you know, this is the company that I've followed, you know, religiously. And they're doing some of the best work out there, you know, never mind WWE, never mm -hmm. mind AEW, but TNA man is doing some incredible work with some incredible talents. And of course you can see some of those talents interviewed on WrestleSphere. So go and check out the website, WrestleSphere.com on the YouTube. Um, but then also I think uh, the, the <laughs> I'll never ever share these, but the private WhatsApp chats between uh, the WrestleSphere crew and the Gimme a Hull Yeah crew, there's some real like opinions, man. People, I think Sam and Andy and Anthony's engagement and the way that and jack of course the moderator jack Mamora, yeah. you know i'm a, a moderator some of the stuff that they talk about and how passionate they are it made me miss it a little bit you know mm. and I, but, but but crucially you know and specifically it was it was tna and the tr transition that impact went through when when you know scott demore said tna is effing back and i saw that you know you know, the, the work that TNA is currently doing and was doing, I was like, yeah, mm. yeah, I'm going to continue this journey. So when you say continue this journey, what are some of your goals for Give Me A Whole Year in 2024 as we record this and some of your goals for WrestleSphere as we record this? I, I think Give Me A Whole Year has always been, like I said, about having fun. So I think going back on, not necessarily to do live streams, but to you know, I've been, for example, I've been, I'm, I've been doing some great work. Uh, well, not, 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 I, not, I've enjoyed the work rather than it's not for me to say whether it's great work. I've been, I've been jumping on to talk about, uh, you know, some theories about the return of Bo Dallas, you know, Bray's brother, and whether he mm. will come back, and you know, things like that, because that, that's stuff that I'm into, because I'm into those characters. So you know, I pop that on the channel. You know, I, if a TNA. Uh, pay per view comes on, yeah, I might do that because I really enjoy TNA's work. I'm only doing stuff now on the channel, Tom, that I enjoy. But mm. of course, I will support Anthony in his weekly AEW journey. I will support Sam as he covers SmackDown, and I will support Dan as he covers Raw. You know, when when I whenever I can. Um, so my goals for for for, for um for give me a whole year is to, uh, to have fun. Uh, and to keep doing so, and to and to help the others, to help the others do the same. WrestleSphere is 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 be in those rooms, man, in those UK shows, the European shows. I, you know, I'm not under any illusion. We're still small. We're still small scale. I'm not trying to get into the room, into the media rooms at WrestleMania quite yet. But I do believe, One as day. we as we have evidenced, you know, we can be in the rooms for Money in the Bank. We can be in the rooms for you know uh, crucial UK WWE PLEs. You know, we have, you know, we've interviewed, you know, your Finn Balors. You, we've interviewed your LA Knights. We've interviewed Selena Vega. I mean, it's all there. It's either on Soundsphere, it's mm. either on WrestleSphere, or it's on Give Me A Whole Yeah. You know, you can see the evidence of what we have done. And that, you know, I'm really proud of. Um, You know, so be in those rooms. Whether it's me or whether it's Sam and Andy, I don't actually mind. You know, that, that we're a team. We're a team. And, mm. and that is always the way it has been and will be. If 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 Andy wins, I win. If Sam wins, I win. Vice versa. So WrestleSphere as a group, whether it's me, whether it's Andy, whether it's Sam, if we are in some of those rooms, whether it's one a year, one of these media rooms, what you know, or, or five, that's great. You know, last year I was at the, you know, I was at the press conference. I got to sit in the room and be as part of the press conference. You know, so so I've already achieved a lot of the goals I wanted to. Uh, you know, you know, when it comes to WWE, more stuff with AEW, which we're currently talking. I'm talking to John about at AEW, and obviously keep that wonderful relationship we have with with TNA's. Uh, I, I'm I'm spitting. I'm so excited about it, Tom. Yeah, uh, that wonderful relationship that we have with TNA's UK uh, press, and just keep keep those interviews coming. Keep telling those stories. Exactly what you're doing with the wrestling media and with the wider media. I'm all about telling stories. You know this, and and I want to continue to do that. What do you do on? You talk about telling stories there. What do you do on those days 
because we all have them, Dom. You might be burned out with work, with your shoot job, as we'll now call it, or yeah. you might have done a lot of stuff for Wrestle Spear. Give me a whole year, Sound Spear, the day before. How do you keep yourself motivated on those days that you're like, I have no motivation to create now? I, I pass it off, man. And what I, what I, what I, when I when I say that, what I mean is, uh, and this is why I think you know we do get you know these opportunities because we're a professional outlet. WrestleSphere is, and it, you know SoundSphere and WrestleSphere are. You know, give me a whole year, Dan can pick it up, and sometimes and a lot of the times he wants to if I'm tired because again that selfless nature that that Dan has. You know, Sam and Andy, I can rely on to pick up a live stream if 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 I don't want to do it. But again, I'm not really doing those anymore. So give me a whole year is kind of taken care of. Uh, WrestleSphere, SoundSphere, we're professional. We're a professional outlet. You know, we're very proud of the work we do. So I pass that work on, whether it's Andy, whether it's Sam, whether it's another writer, you know, uh, we've we've just had uh, Callie uh, come on, Callie Petch, who's done a film review of uh, The Iron uh, the Iron oh, Claw. I've not seen it at time of recording, so please, no spoilers. Uh, no, of course not. But The Iron Claw, you see what I mean? So there mm. will be people that we can trust because we are a professional outlet. We do pay writers. We do create opportunities in the same way SoundSphere has always done. We're still doing that with, mm -hmm. with, with, uh, with WrestleSphere. So I will pass on the opportunity. Um, you know, I don't need to do everything, you know, uh, delegation, I think for anybody who wants to be in these rooms, wants to build a professional outlet, you can't do everything on your own. So delegation mm -hmm. is key. That's what I will do. You talk about SoundSphere, WrestleSphere, uh, mentoring young writers or young presenters and things like that. Mm. How important is it for you to mold the next generation and to see the next generation coming up in in the media side of the world? Well, I think I think at the end of the day, I've always had a very um, kind of, I guess, alternative view. Some people might call it that, but I'm, I'm not really big on gatekeeping. I've seen it a lot in music, and I'm sure it is the same. Obviously, different professionals will say different things about this. Uh, but I see a lot, you know, I have seen a lot of gatekeeping across media industries where, you know, your contacts are your contacts. You don't share them out. Um, and, you know, fair enough. I get that. If that's your thing, no disrespect. Uh, but for me, I don't really, it doesn't really matter who I've interviewed if I can't share it with somebody else, if I can't give mm. somebody else the opportunity to do that, if I believe in them and I trust them crucially and they're professional, but what's the point in me below? Oh, I've interviewed Chris Jericho or Kurt Angle or whatever, Rick Flair, Mick Foley, all people that while we are here, you know, I can say that I have interviewed, but if I can give somebody else the opportunity to do that, then, then why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I share my experiences, Tom, where possible? It's not mm. always possible where possible. Why wouldn't I share my experiences with uh with other people you know what is wrestlesphere if it's just me on my own you know doing this stuff it's so much cooler to have sam involved it's so much cooler to have andy involved you know if if i didn't want to do it anymore like with give me a whole yeah i know anthony would pick it up you know mm. i know that i know that there'll be people to pick it up and, and do the work and you know if i wasn't here you know, one day, you know, for whatever reason, I know that, that Andy and Sam would be able to do mm. it. I can comfortably send them into these, you know, quite high pressure situations and do these interviews. I believe in them, you know, and, mm. and, and we've had people from Soundsphere go from small towns, you know, to, to, to living in London full time, working in creative industries, living in America full time, working in the creative industries from, from like a small northern town like Scunthorpe. You know, it is possible. The proof is in the pudding. The evidence is there. You know, unfortunately, thankfully, most people that I know that have worked with us have gone on to do cool things and, and they don't think I'm, a, think I'm a dickhead. So that's good, ah. you know, right? So like the evidence is there and that's crucial because otherwise it's just me tooting my own horn. But for, for me, I'm like, the value of these stories is great, but, but what does it matter unless it reaches people, right? And what's the best way for it to reach people to share it? to connect other people with opportunities. I've interviewed loads of bands. I've interviewed loads of wrestlers. Well, why don't I share that experience with somebody else? And I, I'm aware that different people, when they've got bills to pay, they've got different experiences, they've got different situations. They might not be in the situation to do that, but I know that maybe they want to get there. You know, I just, I, you know, I'm just, I just started earlier. I just started the mentor thing a little bit earlier yeah. than, a lot, than a lot of people because I was in a situation to do that because Soundsphere had a bunch of funding, you know? So, 
I think everybody I know, the greatest wrestling journalists in in you know you know in the world, you guys like Alistair McGeorge in the UK, you know, numerous people you've interviewed on the channel. Yeah, even mm. even you, mate. I, I bet that you get to you'll get to a point where you want to train somebody. I mean, look at how you ended up connecting us with Omer for wobbling about and rocking out. Mm. You're 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 starting it. You're starting it's the journey good, now. Yeah. You know, you're 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 going to become a mentor for people. I just started a little earlier because why the why the f not? You know, what, yeah. what's the point in me just being like, oh, I've interviewed this person, I've interviewed that person, if I can't give somebody else the skills to to do that or the opportunity to do that? You know, because because Sound Sphere, you know, is bigger than me. Wrestle Sphere is bigger than me, and it must be bigger than me because I'm one dude. With one set of experiences, you know, if, if if people can't see, I'm so passionate about this. I'm bloody sweating because I want <laughs> I want people to know that that um that that we are we we will we will support people. If anybody's interested in wrestling journalism, get in touch with me. Get in touch with Sam. Get in touch with Andy. If anybody's interested in music, if anybody anybody's interested in the arts across the country, bands, artists, whatever you want to do interviews, get in touch. You know, if I don't know somebody. I well, if, if I can't do it, I will know somebody that can, and yeah. I will do my best to connect you. And that that is what I want to do with my life. Unfortunately, what I have been able to do with the last few years, I think I know. I think oh, I definitely, know. <laughs> definitely, I do. Do you know this? And it sounds like I'm blowing smoke whenever we talk. I don't think my channel would be in the position it's in today if it wasn't for you. You know no, that. Well, I appreciate that, man. Like I say, I think, I think. You know, you're going to grow and develop, a bit, you know, the stuff you, I mean, the evidence of what we're talking about, you know, the proof is in the pudding thing is what I like to say. You you know, you interviewed SRS. He doesn't do a lot of interviews. You know, there is countless examples of, of people on your channel that don't talk. I mean, the cultaholic guys, you don't see a lot mm. of that. I mean, who's in it? Who else has done those interviews? You are the wrestling journalist journalist. Like I've said to you before, that is your thing. and And you've continued to grow. You've got better and better at what you do. And that mm -hmm. is the evidence of what I'm saying. You know, you have got better and better what you're doing. I think, you know, like I say, you know, I still, I, you know, I want you to have a website one day because I, I genuinely think, you know, you could mm -hmm. you could produce a kick-ass website and it'd be awesome for, to host your content. But I think, like I say, there is so much that you've done, so many ways that you've grown. And I'm really, really proud of you, mate. I'm really, really proud of you. You know, it's not about me, um, you know, but I'm happy to have a hand in it. I'm happy to have had a hand in it. And I know that Sam Smith is... I know that Andy Spores, Dan Hargreaves, all those people, Anthony, we're all very proud of you, mate. Like, and that, you know, you could see it in my eyes, man. Like, yeah. I mean what I'm saying. I know we're across the other side of the country and we're on a camera. It's and I'm crazy sweating. we've never met. Yeah, is. we've never physically met. But like, I, you know, this is the this is the response you get from me, man. The real response. I am here, sat here in my in in the wrestling office. I'm sweating buckets because I'm passionate not because you know because you make me feel very very comfortable but I'm just very hot I'm very hot it's very warm in this yeah. room but 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 I am here because I love talking to you I love being here um, and, I, and, and I want the opportunity to tell you on record whether this comes out in 2024 or 25 you know we are all very proud of you and I know that speaking you know speaking to Nick when I spoke to Nick you know speaking to, to Sean you know people remember you man because you're oh, not that a dick was such a weird interaction <laughs> yeah because yeah. um, can we tell that story? Yeah, man. Well, uh, you know, I'm sat in um I'm sat in uh, the most recent WWE UK pay-per-view they did. I think I think Money in the Bank. Um and uh yeah, I just done you know, I done the LA Night interview. Yeah, I done the uh I done, you know, Selena Vega, all these wonderful interviews. And Sean was on the other side of the room. Nick Houseman, I think, was maybe two interviews uh, away from me. Um and I didn't speak to Nick until we were sat together in the media section on SmackDown. You me a picture, I know Yeah, that. so we were sat together. We ended up sitting together and, and like I was like, I've seen your interview on talking about the evidence of, of the work and, it, you know, it, it, uh, it translating, you know, I'd seen the interview you'd done with him uh, and I mentioned it and he was like, oh yeah, Tom. But before that, you know, um, you know, I went over to see Sean and our, our to say hi. And it wasn't like, Oh hey Sean, how are you doing? My name's Tom. It was hey mate, how are you doing? Tom says hi because you did. I think you'd said to me to say hi, I and I, 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 and it, so I was like, yeah, that's my. You know, I could say because it's the truth. Tom says hi, and we had a chat. We had a chat because we we both knew you. We both said you did good work, and you were great at what you did, and uh, and what you do. 
and and that was it. And I, 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 Nick and I, you know, had a big, big chat. You know, Nick and I have kept in touch since then as well. Mm. So, and that is down to you, mate. You sent me that picture. I don't think I've told you this, but I'll tell you on camera anyway. Yeah. You sent me that picture, and I'd had a really bad day. I think, right. if I remember correctly, I couldn't. Like, it's one of those days that you go, why was I upset about that? But I can't remember what I was upset about. Right. But it's like, I was upset about something. And I saw that picture on my timeline and I was like, oh, my work does mean something. Does that make sense? Absolutely, it does, mate. Absolutely. And it does mean something. I think I think um, I posted something on social media um, recently and I've been thinking about it a lot. Mm. It was one of those... Uh, uh, it was like a little note and somebody had written, it's like, if you knew your work wasn't going to be seen by anybody, would you still do it? If your art wasn't going to be seen by anybody, would you I still would. do it? Yeah, well, exactly. And we're in the business of being seen. We're sat here. This is going to go on YouTube, but for, 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 you know, Lord's sake or whatever, you know, um, you know, we're in the business of being seen, but the fact of the matter is you would still do it. And I would still do it. Um, and we're lucky. We're lucky, Tom. How lucky are we that we are seen? We mm. are appreciated. You have over a thousand subscribers now. And you are, have some of the interviews. You have some of the only interviews that some of these media personalities have ever done on your channel. And and, and that is a testament to your work. So you are seen. But the fact of the matter is you would do it if you weren't. You would do mm. it even if you weren't going to be seen. And, and and I and a lot of my work, to be fair, a lot of the stuff outside of YouTube never never gets seen. But 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 I have this drive to create. You know, I have this drive to to create and and that passion. And I think that the SRS has that. Nick Houseman has that. Anthony has that. Anthony Nalen has that. The Anthony Podcast has that. Dan Hargreaves, Sam Smith, Andy Spores, all the people that we love. They have this drive and determination and, and, and we're all in it together. We're all supporting each other. I can't even remember the original question, but we are all in it together. We're all supporting each other, Tom, right? Yeah, 100%, man. But as we only have an hour and I do want to be respectful of your time, we are going to look at wrapping this up soon. But before we do, and before we do generic questions and the wrap up question of what you want to be remembered for, if this was to all end tomorrow, you talked about podcasting and mentoring and stuff. What would you want your legacy as a podcaster to be? It's all ah, I love that question, man. You know, I love that question. Um, I think that I just told some good stories. Mm. You know, um, I've been thinking a lot about. You know, I asked that question of a lot of people in my interviews, and I kind of stole that off you. I think it's all right. It's all good. It's 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 yours. You can you can take it. Um, I. It's it's interesting, is it goes back to that previous answer about the art. You know, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm I'm just trying to tell some stories, man. I'm just trying to tell other people's stories. If somebody identifies with it, you know, I, I think I don't know if I've ever told you this on camera because this is very, you know, you know, it's not come up, but I remember um I remember touring in my band, my old hardcore punk band, the Parasitic Twins. I remember touring in Germany with that band and um mm -hmm. a guy had seen me on stage this is a tiny venue maybe like 80 people maybe 100 maybe 80 to 120 people and um and i came off stage and he filmed the set and he checked with me he could show this set to his wife his wife also had cerebral palsy and he was like i've never seen anything like what i just saw mm -hmm. um my wife doesn't really believe that that she can do anything or you know she doesn't really believe that she has any skills or anything to offer and she's really down you know she's become you know really really down i'm going to show her this video of you playing drums and 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 hope and hope that helps and i just wanted to say i've done that and thank you for playing and like to be honest, dude, like, I don't know if people say this, if, you know, if, you know, they get hundreds of views on their videos instead of thousands or millions, but, you know, people say, oh, well, I just want to create, I just want to be an artist, right? All right, fair enough. And you do that. You create anyway. Do it anyway. If you get 100 views, if you get 1,000 views, do it anyway. But no one can take the fact, no one can take that experience away from me. No one can take the, the fact that I touched 
somebody enough for them to film a live set. And this mm. is away from wrestling podcasting. This is away from Soundsphere magazine. This is me on stage performing with my tiny, grimy, hardcore punk band at a venue in Germany. Somebody came up to me and told me that it meant something, that I, they saw me play. That's enough. I've already, I, like, I'm good. Like, I'm good. And I've got thousands of views on videos. I've mm. got... You know, I, I've been I've been privileged enough to have an audience for the stuff I do. Thank you for anybody watching this who's interested, uh, you know, and thank you for supporting Dan, Anthony, you know, Andy, Sam. Thank you for supporting Tom. We are, we're very grateful to you for your attention mm -hmm. and your time. But 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 my legacy is is maybe somebody and this is the this is the content creators, you know, default answer. Right. Like maybe somebody saw it and was like, hey, maybe that person with cerebral palsy, uh, you know, if they can do that, then maybe I can. You know, uh, Tom, you know, I've run a 10K and I know people mm -hmm. have said to me, that's unbelievable. You know, that people, I want people to see the stuff I do and think I can do that too. I remember, uh, yeah, final answer to that question. I, and again, evidence. I remember somebody um, from the... Um, the Ringsiders podcast, another Hull-based mm. wrestling podcast. They said after I did Money in the Bank, after I, you know, after I had my picture with LA Knight and with Zelina Vega and all these stars, you know, you know, they were like, Dom is, Dom is putting, you know, Dom makes me believe that it's possible for people from Hull, from where we are, which isn't a me, you know, a massive media city. Um, you know, makes me believe that I can, do, and that's cool, man. Because anybody could, like, like anybody can do what we do. There is a system. You got to have a website. You got to have the hits. You got to have a good channel. Mm. You know, you, you got to be professional. But, but if you're good and you're not a dick, I believe anybody can can do what we do. And I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to be dismissive of the work that you have done, that I have done, that anybody else does. But if you believe in yourself enough and you've got a good idea. And you 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 are good at what you do and not an ass, then then I believe it. You know, I believe it is possible. And I believe you and I and Andy and Dan and Anthony Talks and my Anthony Nayland, I believe we are evidence. Oh, of definitely. It. Everything yeah. that I'm saying, you're doing. You know, you're already doing it. So I'm not just saying this to blow smoke up my own ass or to promote my channels. Everything I'm saying, you're doing. You know, let me let me ask you a question really briefly. Has anybody ever come up to you or anybody commented on your videos and said, thank you for doing this? It's inspired me. Or just thank you for doing this. I really yes. appreciate it. You know, that, the, and can I tell you the video? Because this is the exact one. Yeah. It was the video with, I don't know if you've seen it. This is a niche video, but it's the one with... The lady that runs the care company. Yes, so, yeah. I saw, it was one of your first ones, right? Pretty much. That's right, yes. Somebody mm. reached out to me. They'd seen me through Cultaholic because Cultaholic were always very good to me and retweeting that stuff. And they were like, I I saw this through Cultaholic. This is so inspiring. Please keep doing this. There you go. So that there, there there's that there, there's my evidence. Mm. Yeah. And we're not we're not doing it to be platformed. We're not doing it to be to be special or to be, you know, important. We're doing it because, because isn't that cool that somebody mm. randomly that doesn't know who you are was like, that motivates me. And then they maybe go on their journey. Maybe they end up doing mm. what we're doing. Maybe they end up doing it better. Who knows? But the point is maybe we gave them a starting point. Yeah, right? definitely. Definitely. Before we wrap this up, Don, with generic questions, I do have one final question, yeah. which is, do you we it boil it down to three pieces of advice? Someone wants to start a podcast, a wrestling website, things like that. Your three big pieces of advice. What are they? Be professional. Don't be a dick. And uh, on an emotional level, lift people up mm. because because um, there are you know for example. And I'll give you a brief example, right? I'm in the room, you know, these media rooms with big, big level journalists, your SRSs, your, your Nick Hausmans, uh, you know, Joe, 
uh, by Amonte, who, um, you know, hopefully I got the pronunciation of his wonderful last name right. Mm. Uh, Joe from Sporf, he was there at the time. You know, Sporf is a, you know, it was a, was a globally renowned outfit. Joe had worked, he's a journalist in Manchester. You know, he'd worked for the, you know, the biggest platforms in the world. And now he gives wrestling content to, to, to WrestleSphere. You know, he does stuff for us. Mm. And, you know, he gets you Shawn Michaels. He gets your AJ Styles. And that's now on WrestleSphere. Those features that he has done are on WrestleSphere. So, so we get, you know, we we, you know, we're getting credits for AJ Styles interviews, and that wouldn't have happened without Joe. Uh, you know, lift people up, give them, give them opportunities. Joe has helped me, you know, uh, advance, you know, our opportunities. You know, I will, I helped Joe when he, when he got, you know, um, when he didn't have any work. You know, or he didn't have as much work. You know, when he was, you know, struggling. Yeah. So, so that, and I'm happy to do that because it makes sense. You know, he's a great journalist, a great talent, and we get so yeah. much out of working with him. He's just a good dude. You know, he was lovely, and we met in a in a media room. You know, Andy Spars is the same. You know, we we we've, we've shared so much content. You know, lift people up. Don't be a dick. And, and and be professional. I think, yeah, be 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 good at what you do. And that's what I mean by professional. I don't mean you know you don't have to wear a suit and a tie if it's uncomfortable. I don't mean you have to talk posh if you're not you know from from I don't know somewhere really posh. I'm saying just 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 be good at what you do, which is my professional. And don't be a dick and lift people up where wherever possible. I'm not saying you have to do it every day, but wherever possible. I fully agree, my friend. So as we wrap this up, Dom, obviously, as always, I want to say thank you for coming on. Thank you for helping me, as you always have. And of thank course, you for man. just being a very nice guy. But as we wrap this up, Dom, we are going to do a segment that I call Generic Questions. Those of you that have seen my interviews before, know this where I asked Dom the questions he might be asked on social media, such as his favourite overall wrestling match, favourite overall pay-per-view card, such as Double or Nothing 2019, favourite theme song, favourite tag team, and favourite wrestler. So what's your favourite match of all time, Don? Favourite match of all time, probably Triple H and, and Cactus Jack Royal Rumble 2000. Um, yeah, I think that would be my favourite. Why does that one speak to you as a fan? Just because it was so, the storytelling was so great. Mick Foley was coming to the end of his career. Triple H was going to put him out. Cactus Jack was this indestructible character that went down after being pedigreed onto thumbtacks, you know? Um, it was it was great storytelling, and I, I I got emotional, man. I mean, that would be one, but and I think we've I've talked about this to death, um, but but I think actually one to overtake that will always be mankind's first title win mm -hmm. against the Rock on Raw, and I know I mentioned that at the start of this interview. I cried and I still cry. Mm -hmm. I am I am thirty seven, and I still at the time of recording, two thousand twenty four, February the twelfth. And I still cry at Mick Foley winning the title against The Rock on that Raw when Stone Cold helped him win. That was vindication. That was if he could, and then Michael Cole, one of the greatest. It was the great one of the greatest calls. You know, you know, as much as I detest celebrity culture, as you know, um, I you know people have got to be given their due. And Michael Cole is an incredible com commentator, an incredible asset to WWE, and has been for decades now. The 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 this is what well, I can't remember the specific, and I don't want to come off the screen and Google it and start typing on your podcast, and so you can. But but it was it was this is uh you know this is um the dream of everybody who's ever been told you can't do it. Mm -hmm. That basically is it. This is the dream. And this is for everybody that's ever been told you can't do it. Mm. That man, like I, like I get emotional thinking about it. That was all I needed to take me to, 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 to push me through pain, to, to make me stand in those rooms still when I'm in pain to, 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 to to do the things I do if they matter to anybody, that is why. Because 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 a, a fictional character on a theatrical television show who didn't look like everybody else um won a title, a fictional title. Nobody believed he was gonna do it because he didn't look like mold. He didn't look like you know your rock. He didn't look like the rock. He looked like Mick Foley, he looked like mankind. Mm. Yeah. 
and he was he limped and he was beaten up and he was battered after years of death matches and whatever. Um, and I was like, and, it, and he wasn't supposed to be a champion. Yeah, he wasn't supposed to be in. You know, look, let's look at it this way, right? Maybe people think he wasn't. You know, okay, let's let's relate this back. Let's do a little bit of, you know, let's do a little bit of uh, weirdness here, right? I'm, you know, you maybe 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 that's the reason why when I'm in those media rooms and I'm standing for hours interviewing guys and I'm the only guy in there with cerebral palsy maybe that's why because yeah. because because maybe somebody made me believe that I was going to be that you know that I was going to that I was going to do these things I you know I've won national awards I have I've done a 10k I've toured the world all because maybe people don't think I I I can do it Maybe people mean, don't. Yeah. yeah. Maybe there's some people out there that don't think I can do it. You know, that don't mm. think I can have a successful relationship. That don't think I can be a a successful counselor. That don't think I can be a successful journalist. For those people, that's why I'm still doing what I'm doing. But that came from that moment. It came from that match. Was it was it was it was. Mick Foley wasn't supposed to do it, but he did. I wasn't mm. supposed to do certain things. I was told when I was younger um, that I wasn't going to do, that I wasn't going to be on radio or I wasn't going to be a successful journalist. And people weren't ready for, for someone with cerebral palsy on the radio. And then I went on to, you know, work for the BBC, you know, but I did it. And and now here's my reason why I've sat and picked myself up for two yeah. minutes. You've done the same thing. Right. Right. You've done the same thing. You're here hundreds of interviews deep on the back of an idea. Mm. Anthony talks is another great example. Given his reign, you know, given, Check given, him out, yeah, given all the challenges that Anthony's faced, he's doing it anyway. And I bet there's some people out there that, that, that believe that didn't believe he could do it. I mean, you know, I know that he's had some negative social media stuff. You've had some negative social media yeah. stuff somewhere. So have I, where people have said, oh, if you do, if you've cerebral palsy or if you've got a disability, you shouldn't be doing this. Who the fuck are you, mate? Yeah. Because we're, and we're up because we're all doing it. We're all doing it. Alistair, you know, Alistair McGeorge works for the Metro, probably one of the premier wrestling journalists in the UK, lives in Manchester. He doesn't live in London. He doesn't, he's never, you know, he, he travels all over the world. Because he had, because he believed in himself enough to bet on himself and build a wrestling platform mm. at Metro and at various pl publications that he's done. Another great example, you know, Anthony and I were two students at the same college who one day thought we would start a wrestling podcast, and then we King did, and and here and here it is. You know, mm. me and Sam Smith and Andy Spores wanted to do WrestleSphere. It's out there. It's it's there for people to see and people to engage with. And 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 if you need some support, I'm not talking to, to you um, directly, Tom. If anybody watching this needs some support, if I can help you do those things, I promise you, I will try my level best. I will try mm. my level best. And, and 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 Tom, you know, thankfully, you are, you know, you're the evidence of what is possible. You're the mm. never mind, you know. I know I've just sat and big myself up, but you know, I put myself over in a wrestling term, but but you're crucially you're the evidence. So if I stop doing it tomorrow, you might say, you might say in an interview down the road, there was this guy, Dom Smith, who helped me out, right? That's cool. To, to quote Carlito, I'm cool with that. That's that's good enough for me. Mm. So we talked about. So I went way off. I went way off. Uh, Mankind of the Rock on Raw when he wins the title. We talked about your favorite match there. We'll just quickly wrap up with the pay per views because yeah. I know we're on the time. No, it's all right. It's fine. It's, it's fine. I'm fine. Go for it, dude. Your favorite overall pay per view card of all time. Ooh, dude. Ah, uh, no, because I don't want to Google it. Ah, oh, oh man. Where, Give me some the, matches, and I'll be able to. What help was you. the WrestleMania with Raven, Kane, and the Big Show in a hardcore X Seven? X7, that was great. Love that. Yeah, that one. Let's go with that one. Your X7? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. That was great. Favourite I love that. Favourite wrestler's entrance theme? Oh, mate. You know what? Sometimes I listen to it. You know, people might not even remember him. 
Bless you. But he's, I know he's a very successful personal fitness trainer now, I think, in the US. Uh, Ezekiel Jackson's theme. Mm -hmm. That was great. He was an Intercontinental Champion for a time. There will I be no him. stopping. Yeah, I love that, right? That's yeah. my, I'll listen to that in the car. Um, Code Orange, Shatter, which was, of course, Bray's theme on his return. Um, I love Code Orange. I had the great pleasure to, to interview them a couple of times. Um, oh, man, there's so many. There's so many. I know, as a music guy, this is probably a very yeah, hard Yeah, it's thing. really tough, man. Man, you know, just for the, the nostalgia mankind's, you know, theme the 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 you know da 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 yeah yeah that one yeah, that one yeah just yeah. for just for just for that you know um there's some there's some bangers your Rhea Ripley's now I love Rhea Ripley's now um this is my brutality yeah mm -hmm. yeah I think there's a few there yeah Jeez, I knew when we brought up the rest uh, music question. I know Dom quite well, and yeah. I knew full well that one would take a while. Uh, what about your favorite tag team? Um, you see, it's funny. I had to censor myself for the music question because there's so many uh, tag teams are the same. Now I've got some real, real offshoots, and I'm really looking forward to playing because I think they're in the game this year. WB Two K Twenty Four, the Headbangers. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I know it's silly. I know wrestling purists are going to be like, you're a wrestling journalist. You're a wrestling media professional. They're headbangers. I mosh and thrash you. They're real men wear skirts, man. As a kid, as a teenager who, who like, grew up on that alternative music, I was like, I'm going to wear a skirt to college and, you know, and, uni and whatever. Like, college, yeah, it would have been college at that time, maybe a little younger. I'm going to wear a skirt because Mosh and Thrasher are doing it and mm. I feel confident enough to do so, right? I'm going to dress, I'm going to put eyeliner on because, because Mosh and Thrasher are doing it. So, not necessarily for wrestling skill, but but the headbangers, character. the headbangers character uh, was, was great. Um, I think if you're talking, like, greatest of all time, um, I mean, I love I love the head shrinkers. I love that again. Anything a bit weird, you know me. Yeah, anything a bit yeah. weird and left field. Love the head shrinkers. Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of a modern day. I love, you know, I love the Judgment Day. I know that's a faction, but I love what the Judgment Day are doing. Our uh, truth, of course, National Treasure. I know he's not technically in the Judgment Day, but oh, the Judgment Day, the Judgment Day is a faction. Um, yeah, amazing. Let me think of one more for you. Um, let me I, let me think about you know what I, let's give I don't give AEW enough credit in this uh, House of Black you know what I mean spooky yeah. I spooky be a House of Black How, I'm a House of Black guy there's one of my favorite in fact my favorite ever wrestling interview um, was Malachi Black I did it with a um, uh, John at AEW gave me it one of the first I think it was the first AEW interview we ever did uh, it's on Soundsphere uh, you know go check it out it's uh, it's an hour long an hour and a bit long it was it was a big chat. And and I'm really I'm I'm really proud of it. The acclaimed as well. Scissor me, Tom. There you go. Right there you go. The acclaimed. I got to speak to Max Caster again on Soundsphere. Yeah, I love what the acclaimed are doing, man. I love the acclaimed. And then, everybody loves the acclaimed. I don't know that was coming. I should have known that. Anyway, uh, as we wrap this up, Dom, the biggest generic question in my friend, in my opinion, my friend. I know the answer because I know you very well. But who is your favorite overall wrestler? Of all time? Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put one present. I'm gonna put, a, well, maybe a couple present day, um, and I'm gonna give you the, the the answers that everybody knows. So Mick Foley, all time, all time. Mm. Bray Wyatt, very very close second. Um, Bray, obviously modern day equivalent of uh, of Mick for me, and I'm just just, uh, I'm still, I'm still, you know. I, I, I never thought I'd get emotional over a fictional character, you know, a fictional character mm. and somebody I never met. We had the same birthday. Oh, as well yeah. um bray yeah second um sean waltman the one two three kid the third um monday monday um i love i think dominic mysterio is one of the best heels um out there uh roman reigns of course uh cody rhodes man cody rhodes is the perfect face Mm. But he's the perfect good guy. Cody Rhodes is the perfect good guy. A couple of left field ones for you, Abaddon. They are doing some incredible work over on AEW. Love the zombie thing. And uh, I think I think they're doing some incredible stuff. Um and um let me think of a couple of ML MLW guys. Um I think Hammerstone, I loved in MLW. I think MLW is great. Uh, TNA, of course. TNA, I mean. 
Uh, uh, there's there's so many great examples in TNA. Crazy Steve, who we actually oh, interviewed. Yeah. It, was, it was the last interview we did on Give Me a Whole Year before we trans- transferred to WrestleSphere. Crazy Steve's great. Um, you know, fantastic. Uh, he's probably my favorite in TNA. There's, there's, there's other great examples as well. Trey Miguel, who we've done a bunch of interviews with. Trey's great. Um, there's so many men, but but if you want my top three of all time, and 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 I and I don't care what you uh, wrestling purists say, Mick Foley, Bray Wyatt, and Sean Waltman, the one, two, three kid, X Pack, top three. That's so cool. Dolph Ziggler, <laughs> Dolph Ziggler as well as a fourth. Dolph Ziggler, who Nick Nemeth in TNA now, he's in the he's fourth. He's great. That's Better than so- Shawn Michaels, I think. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> You and I have this debate all the time. Well, I have this argument and debate with everybody, man. Everybody, everybody argues with me, but for me, Nick Nemeth, uh, Dolph Ziggler, for me personally, better than Shawn Michaels in the ring. Oh, anyway, moving on. Uh, as we wrap this up, Dom, the question I end this show on is: I believe as content creators, podcasters, people with social media, we're sort of gonna live forever in some sort of very strange way. So, what is one piece of content you're like? I'd like to be remembered for that. Then what is one that you're like, please forget about that? You know what, dude? I'm going to say some of the stuff you and I have done together on Wobbling About Rocking Out, personally, mm. um, because we and you have shared our stories. Mm. Um, uh, I think the thing that I, the thing we did with Anthony talks uh, around disability, no, about yeah, around disability and wrestling, and the impact. I think that was on. Was oh, on, that was on. Give me a whole year. That was, was, was on. It was on. It was on Give Me a Whole Yeah. I know it wasn't the most professionally done thing, but Anthony, <laughs> Anthony Nayland did that. And I think, what if somebody else with disability who's a wrestling fan watches that and sees us doing our thing? How mm. cool is that? I think the best interview I've ever done, um, probably the Malachi Black one on a wrestling, on a wrestling, uh, you know, stretch. Uh, Raven, I spoke to Raven, who's one of my, in fact, Raven's definitely number five. If I was going to pick a number five, Raven would be number five from ECW, of course. Um, Raven, speaking to Raven was wonderful. Um, there's so many, man. I mean, um, yeah, just so many, mate. Go and have a look at most. I mean, even the stuff that is, you know, even the stuff, the earlier stuff, man, that's just not very well done. I don't look at it as a, I don't, I don't look at anything and go, uh, uh, I'm glad that's, I, I don't want anybody to see that because I've learned stuff. I've grown. Yeah. You know, I've learned as a content creator, you know, I'm learning right now that I'm going to have a fan for next time I do this. I'm learning right now. Yeah, that's that a I good idea. To, it's very you know, hot in this room. Very. Yeah. You see, so I'm learning all the time from, from, from my, from my, uh, you know, from my experiences, I, I try not to call them mistakes. That's a counselor, counselor, yeah. the, the counselor in me. Uh, I try not to call them mistakes. I'm learning from my experience, um, you know, all the time. So the Malachi Black thing on a wrestling, um, wrestling thing. Uh, so many wonderful ones on Soundsphere. Just go check out most of the Soundsphere stuff. I'm really proud of all that. Um, you know, the wobbly about rocking out stuff, the mental health stuff. I think overall, man, some of that stuff we did. The disability and wrestling stuff, very personal stories that we shared, very mm-hmm. deep and personal stories. I'm really proud that that exists. And I, you know, I don't care whether it's the shiniest and best example of our professional skills. I think we shared, and I and I shout out to, of course, Anthony Talk as well. Anthony Talks. We shared some deep stuff, man. We we yeah. we got honest on that. And I hope that somebody with a disability sees that uh, and maybe decides to start their own YouTube channel or podcast or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I fully agree with you, my friend. So as we wrap this up, Dom, obviously I like to give my guests the opportunity to promote. So please promote yourself. Where can the good people find you, your work, etc.? Man, that's it. That's a that's a loaded question. Um, WrestleSphere, WrestleSphere.com, uh, S-P-H-E-R-E. Uh, SoundSphere, so S-O-U-N-D-S-P-H-E-R-E-M-A-G.com, SoundSphereMag.com. Uh, is for South Sphere, the music stuff. Wrestle Sphere, of course, for the wrestling. Waro.co.uk. We got that one right. It was nice and short. Waro, W-A-R-O.co.uk for the mental health and disability stuff. Uh, what else? Give me a whole year, of course. Give me a whole year on YouTube. Uh, weekly live streams. You'll see Dan on Monday Night Raw. You will see Anthony on AW Dynamite on Wednesday. You will see Sam Smith on on SmackDown and all of a combination of all three 
on regular PLEs and pay-per-views, whatever you want to call them. You might even see a little bit of me pop up every now and then, but please go and support. Give me a whole yeah. And obviously, crucially, most importantly, as we finish up, uh, support Tom Talks Rubbish. And thank you, mate, for giving me my hot and sweaty platform today, this evening on uh, February the 12th, 2024. Whenever this comes out, mate, I am eternally grateful that you are still interested and you believe other people are interested in what I have to say. Uh, thank you to everybody watching this, whether it's now when it goes out or two years down the line. I appreciate you, and I'm sure Tom appreciates you too. Uh, I'll let you do the the outro, but uh, thank you all, and uh, hull yeah. Hull yeah, definitely, guys. So if you guys like this, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the channel, Tom Talk Trash on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast now as well, Tom Talk Trash. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on X at Tom Talk Trash, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye now. Thank you.